Hi, I'm Steve Good, and welcome to my scroll saw workshop. If you've been following the progress of these tutorials, you'll know that uh, this tutorial is where we will begin to actually design a scroll saw pattern. And as we do that design, I'll be talking about the tools that I'm using and the different features and benefits of those tools. Um, I decided to do it this way uh, as far as designing a pattern as we go, as opposed to just picking a tool and talking about what it does, because uh, personally I think that gets kind of boring. And since I want this to be relative to scroll solvers, uh, we're going to design a pattern as we go. So we're going to do something uh, fairly simple today, but something that almost everybody uh, will be able to use, and that is we're going to design a little uh, name plaque that you can set on a desk. And I think everybody's seen these, and uh, it's very simple, but we'll be able to show some of the tools and the concepts behind those tools. So with that, I want to do uh, one thing first before we start the pattern, and that is to tell you that uh, after you get CorelDRAW installed and running, uh, this is the default look of the uh, toolbars and the different menu items, with the exception that I've added a couple of dockers over here. Uh, but there is one more thing, or actually a couple more things, that I normally change before I start designing patterns with CorelDRAW, and I want to show you those first. I like to have uh, two more toolbars available on the screen at all time, and luckily CorelDRAW allows us to customize the look of the user interface. So if you'll go up to the uh, Windows menu item and scroll down to Toolbars, you'll see these are the list of all the toolbars uh, that can be made available on the user interface. One that I like to add is the Zoom toolbar. So I'm going to scroll down here to Zoom and click that, and you'll see that that'll add the zoom features to the toolbar. And as we get into it, I'll show you why I like to add that. Another one that I normally add, but I'm not going to do in this video because we're kind of limited in screen space here because I'm only capturing uh, at uh, 1024 by 768 resolution, and so there's not quite enough room for it. But normally I also go ahead and turn on the text toolbar uh, so I have those features available to me at all times. But uh, like I said, in this case, we'll leave them turned off. Okay, let's go ahead and get started, and we will start out with the text tool. That's a tool that you'll be using uh, all the time in your scroll saw design, so we'll just start out there. Up here in our properties uh, toolbar, you see these two little boxes right here. This is portrait, this is landscape. When I'm designing anything to do uh, that I know that the length of, or the width of the pattern is going to be longer than the height, I'll generally go ahead and switch the uh, page design over to landscape like this. And uh, it just gives me uh, more room to design the pattern in a lengthy uh in the length direction instead of the height direction. Now this will be where I can show you why I like to add the zoom tools up here. You can see when I switch this over from portrait to landscape, we've got a lot of free space around here uh, that I would like to use as I'm drawing, but I like to try to stay within the page limits also because that's what we're going to print from. So by adding the zoom toolbar up here, you can see that over here on the right I have three options. I've got zoom to page, zoom to width, and zoom to height. And because I want to fill in this right here and here, I'll just click on this button and it makes it a little larger. Now I'll do the others too so you can see what they do. If I do zoom to width, you can see that the width of the page now fits within the confines of the screen, but the height is off the top and bottom. If I do zoom to page, I go back to where I was. So in, uh, what I'm constantly doing is I get my page out of sort just by moving it or uh, rescaling it or whatever I do. I'm constantly back up here to the zoom to height to get my screen back centered and where I need it. And if I had zoomed it off the side or scrolled it off the side of the page, I can also use this button to recenter it and get back where I want. So that's the first little tip right there. Go ahead and put your zoom tools up here on the menu on the uh, toolbar, and uh, that'll give you a real quick access to it. Okay, as we go down here, this is our text tool and the uh, uh, the uh, fast click button for the toolbar or the text tool is F8 if you want to use it. But in this case, I'll select select the text tool. Now the text tool has two different ways of designing text. Once I click this, if I click my left mouse button and drag, it will put a bounding box on the screen uh, that is designed to hold text. And 
and you can see we can type text within that text box. That's just normal text, and uh, if you're uh, wanting to add a paragraph to the page or some instructions on how to design the pattern, that's generally the, the way you would do it. Let's go ahead and delete that. Another form of text in CorelDRAW is called artistic text, and to do that we click the text tool, and instead of clicking and dragging onto the screen, we just click. And that will put a cursor on the screen where we can type. So two different ways of getting text on the screen. Now with that text selected, uh, you can see we have these uh, grab bars around the outside, and we can grab them and change the size of that text. We can change the height of it. We can change the width of it. So we can make it basically any size we want. Instead of doing that, we can also click onto the screen with our text bar and that will bring up our context sensitive uh, properties bar up here and you'll notice that it changed to the properties for our text tool. Let me go back and click on this and you can see this is our normal properties bar. As soon as I click on the text tool you can see that it changed and it gave, gave us the properties for the text. So before we even type on the screen as we have this text tool selected we can go up here and select a font. In this case I'll select Arial Black. Click OK. We can select the size of the text. In this case I'll select 100 points. Click OK. And we'll talk about the other features as we go along here but these are all different properties that are designed to change the style of the text on the screen. So now let's go ahead and click on the screen so we have our artistic text and I think I'll type in my wife's name and I'm going to do it all in caps. And so now we have the name that we want to design this pattern from on the screen. And you'll notice that you'll see me a lot of times as I do something I go back up here to my pick tool and uh, click on that. And let's talk about the pick tool just for a second. When we have something on the screen that we want to move or maybe resize, uh, the, the uh, pick tool allows you to set the position and transform the object in different directions. So let's click on our pick tool. With our pick tool we'll click on the text that we have on the screen and you'll see that it puts these bounding boxes around the screen and a little X in the center. With the pick tool selected, we can grab and hold with the left button and we can move the text around the screen. If we use the right mouse button, click and drag and let go, it brings up this dialog box that allows us to move it here, which would be the same as using the left button, or we can select copy here. And you can see we got two of them. So with the right mouse button, I can make copies of this text. Select it. I'm hitting the delete key to delete it. Okay, I just clicked on it with my left mouse button and I want to get this recentered on the screen. And the uh, fast key to get things recentered is the, the P key on the keyboard. So I tap the, key, the P key and it centers my text back on the screen. So we, we're going to use this as a desk plate name. So let's go ahead and grab these bounding boxes and make some changes to the text. Let's say we want this to pretty well fill this piece of paper as we print it out. So let's make it a little bigger. And we did that by grabbing the box in the upper left hand corner and dragging with our left mouse button. We could do the same over here on the right uh, bounding box. I'm going to hit the P key and recenter it and you can see I've got it maybe a little bit big for this sheet of paper. So I can grab any of these middle boxes and drag it to make it shorter. Hit the P key to recenter. Okay, that explains how you move and resize uh, and copy text using the pick key. Let's talk about another feature of the pick key while we're here, and that is the fact that we can also rotate the text. So with it selected, if we click on it again, you'll see that the bounding boxes change to these curved arrows. And what they allow us to do is to grab one of these arrows with our left mouse button, click and hold, and as we drag, you can see that we can actually change the rotation of that text. Now, for this pattern, that won't work very well because we, you know, we don't need it uh, at an angle. So let's go ahead and put it back like it was. And to do that, we'll talk about the undo and the redo uh, function. Up here in your menu bar or your toolbar, you have the undo 
feature. Now you can also find it in the edit menu item under undo rotate but in this case we'll just click our little undo button and put the text back like it was. Okay again we've got the text selected and you can see the bounding boxes. If we click on it again it'll turn the bounding boxes into these arrows and you'll notice that the middle arrows are straight uh, as opposed to curved and what they allow you to do is to skew the object that you're, you have selected. So if I click on this and drag with the left mouse button, you'll see that I was able to skew that text to the left. I could obviously also skew it to the right, and the arrow keys on the, each end of the pattern allow you to skew the text this way as opposed to rotating it. I'm going to go ahead and undo that, and I think I'll leave the text skewed to give us a little bit of an italics type effect on the pattern, and uh, we'll hit the P key to recenter it. So now we've talked about the select uh, tool, and you'll be using that constantly. Uh, a couple of different ways to use the select tool is to click on the object. If you have multiple objects you want selected, let's say we had a circle here, then we wanted to select that uh, at the same time. We could click on our pick key and use the drag with the left mouse button to select everything in that bunch. And then if we move, we're going to move everything. Okay, once we click off the object, it's not selected any longer. So we can go up here and click on this uh, ball that we just added, and I could hit the delete button and delete that text. So you can see the pick tool is, is very useful. You're going to be using it all the time. Uh, so you want to use, learn how to use the different features of it. Okay, let's go back and talk about changing the color of this pattern. I'm going to click on it with the left mouse button to select the text. And over here in my color palette, I want this text to be gray because that's the way I normally design my patterns. So with my left mouse button, I'm going to click on the lightest gray shade that we have. And you'll see that turned the text gray. We also could have clicked on red or any color we wanted, but we're going to use gray. Now if I go up and I want the outline of this text to be black, I can right click with my right, right mouse button with the uh, pick tool selected and it will change the outline color of that text. So there we have our text selected, we've uh, skewed it, we've added color to it, in this case gray, and we've added a black outline. So that's fine. Uh, the only thing we really need now is the base underneath the pattern. So for that, let's talk about the next tool we're going to do. That is the rectangle tool. Let's click on the rectangle tool. And using the left mouse button, we'll start out here a little bit above the bottom of this text. And we'll drag out, using the left mouse button, a base for our text. Okay? I'm going to use the arrow keys to nudge it just a little bit to the left. I want to try to center it under the text real good. And that'll be the base we're going to use for the text. So let's go back up, and again, you'll see me always doing this, and select the pick tool again. With the pick tool selected, I'm going to drag a lasso around both of these items. And now we're going to do something called welding the two objects together. And you'll notice that uh, when I selected everything, the properties context-sensitive uh, toolbar up here changed and it allowed us to uh, make a, several different changes to this particular pattern but the one we're looking at right now is the weld tool and it's right here and the feature or the function of this weld tool is to take two objects and combine them into one so as I click on this weld tool you can see that our pattern has been combined into one piece so we selected the select tool with everything. Let me back up, use the undo key again. Up here in the part of the screen where there's uh, no object, we'll click with the left mouse button, drag and circle everything we want welded together. We'll click on the weld button. That'll combine those two objects together. The only thing we have left to do now is to create another base to set this on and we'll just draw another rectangle out here about the size we want it to be and that will be the base. Again we can select the gray, the black is already selected for the outline. There's our nameplate uh, put together and ready to go. I'm about to run out of time on this video so I'm going to call that an end to it here and we'll pick up again in the next video.